welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of quite a few Tudor history books. Now, where am I taking you to today? Well, I'm taking you to the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 20th of January, 1569, Bible translator and Bishop of Exeter, Miles Coverdale, died. He was buried in the chancel of St. Bartholomew by the Exchange in London on the 22nd of January. Now, let me tell you a little bit about this, uh, this great Tudor man, a very interesting, fascinating Tudor man. It is thought that Coverdale was born in the North Riding of Yorkshire in 1488, although nothing is known of his family or his early life. He became an Augustinian friar and studied at Cambridge, where he was influenced by the reformist views of Robert Barnes. He'd left the Augustinian order by 1528, when he fled to the continent after preaching what would have been seen as heresy. He'd challenged the miracle of the Eucharist, the worship of images and confession. He was in Antwerp by 1534 with John Rogers and William Tyndall. That year, an English translation of Campensis's Latin work on the Psalms was published in Antwerp, and it is believed that this was written by Coverdale, who'd already started his translation of the Bible. His translation was completed in October 1535 and was the first English translation of the whole Bible. Coverdale returned to England in late 1535 and published his translation of German hymns, ghostly psalms and spiritual songs drawn out of the Holy Scripture. He published it in London. This was followed by translations of other German religious texts. In 1537, Thomas Cromwell asked Coverdale to revise the Matthew Bible this was a Bible which combined the work of Tyndall and Coverdale, and he was asked to print it in Paris. However, there was trouble when one of those overseeing the printing was accused of heresy, and around 2,500 finished copies were confiscated by the Inquisition and eventually burned a disaster. Fortunately, the publishers Richard Grafton and Edward Whitchurch managed to flee Paris with some unbound copies. In April 1539, 3,000 copies of the Great Bible, as it became known, were printed, followed by another 3,000 copies in the spring of 1540. This meant that a copy could be put into every church in England. And on the 6th of May, 1541, Henry VIII issued an injunction ordering the Bible of the largest and greatest volume to be had in every church. This was that great Bible. The Act of the Six Articles of June 1539 led to many reformers, Coverdale included, going into exile to escape persecution. Coverdale's former mentor, Robert Barnes, was executed for heresy in July 1540, as was Thomas Cromwell. So going into exile seemed like a rather sensible thing to do when England was not safe for the likes of Coverdale. He and his Scottish wife, Elizabeth Matcheson, fled to Strasbourg, where he stayed for three years, translating and writing tracts. While he was in exile, he worked as an assistant minister and also as a head teacher. While he was away in London in 1546, his books were condemned and burnt at St. Paul's Cross as works of heresy. Coverdale returned to England in 1548 during the reign of King Edward VI, and he became almoner to Catherine Parr, the Dowager Queen. He preached at her funeral in September 1548. After that, he became a royal chaplain and then Bishop of Exeter in 1551. 
However, the death of the Protestant King Edward VI saw Coverdale put under house arrest when Mary I came to the throne, and he also lost his bishopric. The King of Denmark intervened to have Coverdale released, and in 1555 he went into exile, spending a few weeks in Denmark before heading to Germany and then on to Switzerland, where he eventually settled in Geneva. Coverdale set off back to England yet again in August 1559 in Elizabeth I's reign, and he spent some time at the London home of Catherine Willoughby, Duchess of Suffolk, a woman he'd known in exile, and he acted as tutor to her children Peregrine and Susan. In 1564, he accepted the living of St Magnus the Martyr by London Bridge. His wife, Elizabeth, died in September 1565, and Coverdale married a woman called Catherine in April 1566. He resigned his living in the summer of 1566, but carried on preaching right up to the end of his life. In fact, he died very soon after standing in for a preacher at the church of St Magnus the Martyr in London. John Hooker describes how he was asked to preach when it was found that there was no preacher and that he tried to excuse himself, pleading his age, his infirmities, his lack of memory and his voice scarce to be heard. But the parishioners wouldn't take no for an answer. And two men actually carried Coverdale into the pulpit where God did with his spirit so strengthen him that he made his last and the best and the most godly sermon that ever he did in all his life. Coverdale was survived by his second wife, Catherine, but left no surviving children. Although he was buried in St. Bartholomew by the exchange, his remains were moved to St. Magnus the Martyr when St. Bartholomew's was pulled down in 1840. It seems quite fitting that he ended up in the church where he did uh, his very, his final, his very last sermon, that sermon that was his best, apparently. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 20th of January 1557, Queen Mary I's pensioners did muster in bright harness before the Queen at Greenwich Park. Who were they and what happened? Well, you can find out in my video from last year, which I'll give you a link to. You can subscribe to the channel. I always say this, but I would like you to do it. It would be nice by clicking around about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. And you can, of course, leave a comment and give me a like. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.